we go again. What's up, everyone? And we are back for another episode at TMP. And I'm talking to a good friend of mine right now with probably the most successful podcast on the planet right now. My man from Canada, Mr. Fuat Abiyat. Brother, what's going on, my man? How are you, Dennis, man? It's good to be good to be on your show, man. It's yeah. Good to see you. Doing some good stuff, man. So I'm, it, I'm honored to be on. I want you on here because I told you this in the very beginning because you know you're a good talk. You're always a good talk, and and that's why I also watch your podcasts because you. I, I like the natural conversations that you like to have with people, and and you yeah. know, and then you get people to talk. It makes it more fun, you know. I don't even know. I don't even know how I get people to talk. They just no, because you you are natural talk. too. You are really natural. You know what I want to do, and I hope my producer can hear what I'm saying right now, and he will. Sure. I would like to have you as a co uh, a host or as a host with me to do the pay per views and critique these guys on the super fair level. Yeah. That, me and I'm, you would be the perfect duo to do that. And I'm not dude, saying this to bash nobody because everybody has, has these qualities, but yeah. I think we would do it on a different level where, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I, this is just what I feel. Yeah. Would you be up for man, something like would, this, man? Listen, I um, I had some conversations last year because mm -hmm. this came up, and um, I was 100% in. But there are people that you know. I think it's the kind of thing where you kind of have to wait your turn, if if that's even the even even the right way to put it. The people that are involved now, like yourself and Bob Chicarello and Sean Ray and I don't mind naming th these guys are have been around for a long time and they know the history of the sport and they're very very good at what they do. Um, I feel like I kind of bring something a little different. Maybe I, I'm a little bit more in touch with the guys, the younger guys that are involved, or maybe just the guys on a different level because we're on the podcast together all the time. So I would love to do... We need new faces, bro. That's just exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean... We I need new blood. We, okay, of, Sean Rowe is an ex... Uh, Sean Rowe, I'm sorry. Sean Ray is an expert at what he does. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. He has the all the credentials in the world to uh, critique guys. But that's not what I'm talking about when I said we need mm. new faces. I'm talking about to do it different, you know? On, yeah. on, it, it, it's, you, you, can, you can break somebody down and you can break someone down. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, th and yeah. that's what I'm saying. So I, I, I just want to throw this out there and I'm going to put a good word in. I will, Absolutely. Because you're not just someone I, I, I met two days ago. I know I know yeah. how you work. I know that you don't have a uh, you don't have a bad thought about anybody, and 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 you try to be as fair as you possibly can, and you are. And yeah. for that, I want to put you, I want to put your name in the hat for sure. I, I appreciate that, that man. Because that would love... be that would be fun for me to do it with you. You know the other thing, Dennis is I'm a huge fan of the sport. I know. Like I don't know I don't know how. Um... I don't know how much the other uh, everybody else follows the sport, but man, like the California Pro last week, I was supposed to go train with a friend. We were supposed to go train legs, and I said I'll be at your house, be at your house at two o'clock because I didn't I didn't know if they had a live feed or not. So I'm like I'm not going to get to watch the show anyways. Mm. I get a text from a friend and it says uh, Hassan Mustafa's wife has the the live feed on his his live feed on Instagram, which I don't know if she's supposed to. So I apologize if I'm. I think it was free anybody. anyways. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was free. So. Anyway, I go on. Next thing I know, I'm sitting there with my gym bag ready, my shaker cup ready. I'm fully dressed, ready to go train legs. But I just, I'm staring at the screen. I'm like, I text my buddy. I'm like, I'm going to be half hour late. <laughs> and that's like, I want to be. you be a fan, yeah. I'm just a huge fan of the sport, mm -hmm. man. And I think that's something I want to bring to the commentary. Good All thing. Right? Good, good. I'm glad you brought this up. So talk about California. So you watch, so you watch the whole, do you watch prejudging yeah. and the finals? Yeah. Well, I, I saw f pictures from the final. Oh no, we we did watch the finals. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah, we did watch the ending. Yeah. Why not just let let's just break the show down? I don't know if you sure. did, did. You already do it on your podcast? Briefly, yeah. Okay. L I just, just want I just want to know a couple of things. Looking at the lineup, okay, going into the show, I had Mustafa Hassan winning that thing easy if he's on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know about this second guy. I didn't really pay attention to this guy, Shaban. Yeah. God, this dude is dangerous. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even see a, I didn't yeah. even see him coming. So yeah. I was yeah. talking about Mustafa, but for whatever reason, what do you think is it? This guy cannot get in contest yet. I don't know, man. I think certain coaches work better with certain guys. And so do you agree with me saying that because I said it a couple of days ago, I said he needs to do something different now. And I'm not I'm not this is not a knock on Chris. Chris is a yeah. fucking great coach. Yeah, of course. But certain things just don't fit sometimes. And how many years yeah. does it take to find out yes or no? 
No, and I, and I agree. If if a if a guy works with a coach for you know two, three, four years and is getting the same result, then maybe it's time. Like for me, I if I wasn't getting the result I wanted, I I moved on. And I think for Hassan, he looks good. He's got a ton of muscle, but he's just not getting that last bit off. And I don't know if that's Chris's fault or his fault or right. just the the type of diet he's on. When I had him on my podcast, he said he was eating just protein. And I'm like, maybe that's killing his body. Maybe eating on, maybe being on so so low calories and just protein is not working for him. But maybe, I had him actually. I actually had him in third before the show. Really? Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. No, I had him first because I was. I'm still thinking like he, he's going to nail it one time with the I'm amount waiting. of muscle he has. You I'm know, waiting. he kind of gave me that early Rami vibe. My my thing about it was I saw pictures of him. Uh, earlier in the week and I just didn't feel like he was going to be able to get the crispness that he needed mm -hmm. in the last four or five days leading up to the show so I had Patrick winning and then I had Mo Shabon in second and I had Hassan in third so do, so you, you knew this Shabon was coming you know what he looked like Shabon beat Ian Valier uh at the in 2018 I think or 2017 so wow. he's been around and he's he's Dude, done crazy. some damage but he's actually put on like a bunch of muscle since then with the same shape I was so impressed he, he, with his tiny waist flaring lats and the quads are ridiculous massive massive quads yeah he looked amazing i mean a lot of people had him in first over patrick yeah so it, to me it just came down to kind of apples and oranges do you yeah. like the big freaky traditional bodybuilder or do you like the classical i only you know, i only watched the finals live and i was like you know what if they would give it to him i wouldn't even be, be, be yeah. you know that would have been okay with me because you go size over quality because yep. patrick was you know it was probably a little harder you know in certain areas but this dude, and he looked way harder than everybody else next yeah. to Patrick, Patrick, you know, because yeah. abs within small, I mean, it was, for me, it was like, oh, wow. He was phenomenal. To me, I actually, and this might be a crazy comparison. People won't, maybe might not see it, but if you look back at a young Branch Warren, mm -hmm. like I'm talking young, young Branch Warren, he, they have very similar shape. Yeah. And, just just uh, much bigger. Yeah. Well, not even though, because I'm talking Branch Warren in his early 20s, I think, or somewhere in there. And then I actually put a side by side of him and Mo Shabon from you know Branch's younger years mm -hmm. next to Mo's current photo. They have a very very similar structure. So structure, yeah. But I'm talking about yeah. size. He just Shabon size wise, way branch, much size bigger. Wise. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I think she should probably go move on to I don't know if he can go to the Bahamas and do the Puerto Rico Pro. That's gonna be a tough one though, because then you got Akeem Williams he's, doing that show. He's doing the Bahamas. I think McKee, no, he's doing, doing Puerto, Chicago. Puerto Rico. Oh, really? I thought Akeem was doing Puerto Rico. No, he's doing sh Chicago, the Chicago program. Really? Yeah, Akeem, okay. Akeem, I, um, um, Sergio, um, Hunter. That's going to be a show. Yeah, that's they're all doing the Chicago show. Pro. But right now, this I don't know if it's. I think Bahamas is. I think it's. Is it Nick? Nico, is that in August? No, it's the end of June. End of uh, end of June. Puerto Rico is four weeks from California. End of June. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, so. I, that will be. I mean, I don't know about about, about um, Hassan. I don't know if he can ever manage it now. I, I mean, think Hassan. I think Hassan's going on to Puerto Rico. I think yeah. he said something on somebody's Instagram, my Instagram or somebody else's. So I think Hassan's going on as well. So kinda, if I was Shabon, if I was Shabon, I would go on yeah, for sure. I mean, he's definitely. He's, a, he's got an amazing physique. Chicago is going to be another one that's just going to be really stacked, tough to call because uh, stacked. I mean, Hunter's got new muscle. Sergio is always incredible. I mean, Hunter Akeem looks is, fabulous right now. I mean, he looks phenomenal. Akeem, so, sixth sixth place at the Olympia, yeah. coming off of that. Like, so what? What do the other guys do? If let's say whoever wins is one qualification, and then there's only one show left. That's a Tampa Pro. Is that the only one left? I think so. Oh shit! Because I think Ian. So what are these Tampa. guys going to do? Because <laughs> I mean, Cause I think, even if you want to do points, I mean, you got two shows, you can't get enough points. Yeah. Unless you do, is you play Tampa, second. Is Tampa, is Tampa the last one? I think so. That's going to be interesting. Let me, because, let, you know what, let me look it up. That's usually, what, that's, what, that's usually what you do. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ian, um, I know Ian's doing Tampa and he want, you know, he has to qualify. And the Olympia is, you know, Ian's, yeah, that's a really big deal for him. So. Right, because Ian's plan was Vancouver when they moved it to December. Yeah, so now he's got Tampa and... Uh, that's yeah. going to be crazy because I, I have Sergio winning Chicago myself. If I had to predict it now, I would say Sergio is going to win Chicago. Sergio. All right, let, me, let me get let me Yeah, get I, think, I think Sergio. Do you think anybody can beat Sergio at that show? Akeem. I, 
think Sergio from the back. I think Sergio's got him. I know, but Sergio got to be spot on. I think Sergio will be. He hasn't missed the mark yet. True, true. Yeah, hey, well, I, I, I just see the it. size. Just, the size of Akeem. The size of Akeem is what's going to be crazy. I think. But Sergio, Sergio is deceivingly big. Yeah. <clears throat> true, true. And uh, well, Tampa is. Wait a minute. Am I at the right? Oh, yeah. Tampa is August 6th. There's no show after and that? And then there's another one, August 13th, the Texas Pro. I could, yeah, that's uh, what's Oh, name? yeah. I think Ian said he was going to do both. Yeah, he should. Well, I mean, if he doesn't, if he wins, he'll probably shut it down, but who knows. So there's two more shows after that. And then, so somebody's, then so somebody's, somebody's going to get knocked out, that means. That means because yeah. out of, out of uh, the ones we all expect to be at the Olympia, we have Sergio, Akeem, Ian, oh, no. and Hunter. We forgot. We forgot. We got, we got the, uh, this is another one in Spain. Okay. Where Ian could go to, but we forgot the Arnold Classic. Was this added? Is that, but does that qualify you for the Olympia? Uh, oh, yeah. No. Or yeah, is it for yeah, the next? No, it's, deadline it's, is there. It's too late. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be Tampa, for the next year. Tampa will be the last one and then Spain. No, or I mean, Tex Tex Texas, Texas is the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's Spain? How far is Spain off from uh, Texas? Spain is... August, the same weekend as Texas, so forget about that. So there, there you go. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. I like this. Like, I don't know how many. I'm a real fan of the sport. Like, people think I did my podcast to like try and get money or try and get views or something. I I do the podcast because I just love you the like to talk sport. about. It. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love the sport. I love having the guys on. I love talking to them. I love learning about them. I love and the guys I have on every week. I like cheering them on, man. I like you know when their shows are coming up and going through their preps with them and talking to them about it and shit like. Just looking at the schedule, that's that shit's exciting to yeah. me. It's kind of like almost maybe I can't do it no more, so maybe I'm kind of living through them a bit. I don't know. Maybe that's why. But so let me go back to this one. So you got Sergio winning Chicago. So now we have Hunter, Ian, and Akeem for yeah. one show in Texas. No, two shows. Two. Texas, two. Tampa, Texas, and Texas. Tampa. Yeah. Somebody's going to stay home. I was going to say, as I said, somebody's going to be pissed. <laughs> hey, we don't know if somebody's coming out of nowhere. Joe Weider's Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening, and welcome to the event that nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that are back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia. Well, listen, if we if we go by the math, <clears throat> if we go by the math, Hunter stayed home. Because Ian and Ian and Akeem have already beat Hunter. Right? And Ser if Sergio in Chicago, that means Hunter's left out. Yeah, but, I'm not but, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah. that's gonna happen. No. Nah, because Hunter happen. Hunter Hunter has also beaten Ian before. So Exactly. But you see what Hunter Hunter looked like? I mean, he's on a mission too. Hey, that's so, what is, I said. I'm, so is Ian uh, though. That's why I said I'm not saying anything because Hunter looks incredible. Hey, do you ever find with this job the tough thing too is like you want to be a fan, but you have to be careful what you say. Yeah, because you, you don't want to, you don't piss nobody but off. You, but you still want to be honest. And I and I try to be, yeah. but I've already listen. I've already heard of a few people that are mad at me because I'm like, listen, I maybe not. They're not mad at you them. saying what you're saying. Now they're mad at you doing something and you do and have success. That's what they're mad at. No, 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 I specifically know, I'm not going to say any names, but I specifically know of two cases of people that are mad because I didn't pick them as the winner. Or, oh, this, ha yeah. hey, this happens all the time. I mean, I get that all the time. When I'm, when I'm doing my videos, so when I do predictions and I don't yeah. have, I, I could say, that, I'm not, yeah, Dexter was pissed at me one time. I said, Dexter, I didn't believe it at you that moment. You proved me wrong. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. You know, so yeah. it happens all the time. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, somebody's got to say it. 
it's, you know, I don't know, man. It's it's hard. You got to pick. You got to pick the winner. What are you going to do? Can, you can't just pick your. You're going to piss off somebody. Right, right. Can Shaban beat Ian? Well, Shaban Hunter. Beat, <laughs> Shaban can, beat him before. <laughs> can he beat Hunter? Can he beat any of these guys? Take, we got to put him well, in the mix. Ian Ian is a different bodybuilder than when Shaban beat him before. If if Olympia Ian shows up, I don't think Shaban could beat him. Mm-hmm. If look at Shaban, Tam- look at Shaban now and give him fifty percent more condition. But I don't know if he will. Uh, but he could. No, but you know what happens sometimes when guys get a certain amount of muscle, they lose that separation. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah, Rami's Rami's problem. I, yeah, I feel like that kind of happened to Shaban because I think Shaban was in, and I, correct. I'm sure somebody will correct me by looking back at photos, but. I seem to remember he was more conditioned before when he won. So he's put on size, but I wonder if it's at the expense of detail. How, what do you think? How heavy could he be? If I had to guess, he see he looks like he's maybe a little shorter. I, I put him at just under 250, 245. Hmm. So if he drops 10 pounds from where he was, maybe he's back to where it was back then? I would guess 245 if I had to guess hmm. right now. Hmm. I, I can't because I just saw the video and... He was just big. He was bigger than Patrick. His, leg, it, his legs are so big, and that's yeah. usually where guys hold most of their weight. So I'm like, he's got to be at least 245. But I think even if he was a little more shredded, I mean, Ian's conditioning is crazy. So, yeah. I don't know, man. If he comes think, in conditioned. I think Ian will outsize him, mm-hmm. and I think Hunter's got a prettier physique. So I don't know if he's going to have enough to beat either one of those guys. So Hunter and Ian, do you think Ian's going to beat him? <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to put me on the fucking spot. No, here. I'm asking you because <laughs> I, I tell you what I think. I think it could go either way because they both great. That's what I, and it, it that's, depends on who brings, who comes, who nails it. Yeah, I mean that's the biggest thing is this. Ian always comes in condition, but sometimes miss the mark, misses the mark on fullness. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hunter, I think, is still young and doesn't have the maturity that Ian has yet. Even though Ian's only a couple years older, somehow mm-hmm. Ian has a lot of graininess to yes, his muscle. Yes, true, true. So I, I don't know, man. It's like it's tough. It's like you got to see who ends up at 100% that day. Yeah. I, I, I want to see him both at the Olympia, to be honest. Because I don't think – do you think Hunter was 100% at the Olympia? You know, do, do you want to be uh, – to be perfectly honest, I didn't really – Pay attention to Hunter at the Olympia because I think he was better at the at the uh, at the show that he won. At Tampa. Yeah. yeah. So I, I did I like... did I didn't really focus on him. I focused yeah. more on Ian because Ian surprised me. Yeah. He really yeah, surprised so me. For me, he was the surprise of the Olympia. Yeah. You know, other yeah, than Rami, so. other than Rami finally yeah. nailing it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that wasn't surprising me because I knew it was going to happen. Because yeah. I knew it yeah. leading up to the show. Because I told you, I said this is the best I've ever seen him. So yeah, yeah. Uh, unless he breaks his foot or something, you know. But Ian yeah. surprised me because I saw what he looked like in Tampa, which was terrible. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was, it was, yeah, he told me and it was last minute things and, you know, by himself. And I get that. Then he was better in, uh, was it Chicago? What show did he win? New York Pro. He was better in New York, yeah. yeah. And then he was his best, best at the Olympia. Yeah. He, then he was better in yeah. New York Pro. And then I was like, I hope his body's not tired. But he sure Fucking yeah. caught me off guard and 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 showed that was the absolute best. And if he and if he can bring that, yeah, you know. But but how, but how big of a risk is it to nail it 100 percent and then go the to the Olympia the, a couple of months later? The thing with Ian, I think, is and he said this to to me many times. And actually, like I kind of I kind of empathize with it. He gets better as the shows go on because mm-hmm. the first one is probably a little more nerve wracking than than the others. So I think he gets the nerves out of the way, and then as the season goes on, he gets better. Mm. So as long as the Olympia is his second or third show, I think he's going to be able to be better. As long as this is not his only show, then that's a problem, right? Because yeah. I think he needs to knock one out just to get the jitters out of the way, and then mm. he's better. But I think he gets better every year, man. It seems like even mentally he's coming into his own as a bodybuilder. The, so, the, motivation, the motivation is sky high probably. Because I, see, yeah, I think, see the way he trains now. It's ridiculous. His back is going yeah. to be so much better. Yeah, I mean, the belief in himself, I think, is more than it was in the past also. Mm. So I think Ian's going to be tough to beat for that fact. I don't know. I, I don't know. It depends. Uh, it all depends kind of how, how much Hunter has brought up his back as well. If yeah. Hunter brings up his, has brought up his back enough, he could be really dangerous. Yeah, I think the, so, the thing is that they need to literally focus on this show like it's the Olympia. I mean, because the lineup is... It's I know. just like, I know. It's, uh, it's not what it was, you know, getting ready for... Because he was getting ready for, for Hunter. 
at the Tampa yeah. Pro because there was yeah. nobody else that had a name in the lineup, to be honest. So are you in agreement with me then? You think Sergio is going to take Chicago? I think he absolutely can, yeah. But I think if if I think they're going to give Akeem a very good look because he's the highest ranked guy going into the show, yeah. and they're going to give him a, a very good look. And if he's on, it's going to so be hard. Is, <laughs> it's going to be. So, I, I, <laughs> so what is our prediction for the season then? Sergio wins Chicago. Akeem wins Tampa. Ian has to move on to Texas, well, and then him and well, if, him and Hundred. If Akeem's doing the Bahamas, the Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's what I thought. Which, if I was any of these guys. <laughs> I yeah. would do if I'm ready. Yeah. I would yeah. go to Bahamas and try to seal that deal. Yeah. Why put all your basket in, 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 in you know, all your eggs in one basket and not knowing if, you know, if you're going to be ready to yeah. hatch or not? So I would go to the Bahamas. I'm, I'm, let's put it this way. I think, because you brought it up, Akeem is doing Bahamas, and he's going to win. He's got his quality qualification. I don't even know if he would do Chicago after that. Probably would for the money. Yeah. But then it doesn't yeah. matter if he wins or not. I don't think he's going to do anything if he wins Puerto Rico. Yeah. Which should be smart because you don't want to lose that 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 hype. The steam, yeah. Yeah. And well, uh, if he goes into Chicago and loses to Sergio, then it's not going to look good for him at yeah. the Olympia. And if Sergio is in, it, yeah, and in, in that case scenario, then Sergio, I, I still believe Sergio could beat Akim yeah, if he's on. Yeah. Do you know if uh, we haven't heard anything from Cedric in a while? I've been texting him. You haven't heard. I haven't heard from him. Yeah, I mean, Do you know if he's it, competing, it, it, it might, maybe I don't know. I mean, you never know. <laughs> you never know with Cedric. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know what? What do we expect from Cedric? It's not the Arnold, so I know he's not going to look good. Oh shit! Unless, <laughs> unless no. I, when I said look good, I mean he's not going to be a hundred percent. You know, I just don't I believe it when, anymore. I, I think when no one's talking about... Cedric, He's one of the guys that was mad at me one time because I, I keep it real <laughs> and tell it like Cedric, it is. And Cedric's you know what? Sensitive. I'm going to keep doing it until the day He's I die. A, Cedric's as sensitive as I am, so I can't say anything. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no. Uh, no. Is, about, Cedric's, Cedric's most dangerous when nobody's talking about him. Yeah. And so the, shows, Arnold is the best show for him. But I'm just saying, like, if he shows up at one of these shows and no one's expecting him, mm -hmm. it could be could throw a wrench in a lot of people's shit. You know what we didn't talk about? Uh, somebody we just signed, we signed Nathan. Nathan Diash is going to be exciting. Well is, he, know, well, is he competing? I think he's going to do Portugal. Oh, because, listen, can he come to the U.S.? I think so. I think he said he's he's going to still have a visa for him. Okay, yeah. well. So he's supposed to do Portugal. If he does Portugal and wins, then he's going to do the Olympia. Yeah. Olympia, Olympia is going to be interesting this well, year. Well, if he's man. doing Portugal, and he, if he doesn't win Portugal, then... <laughs> He, yeah, you need to stay home. But he needs to win Portugal. I mean, there's only a couple of Europeans. Come on now. Yeah. 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 If he doesn't win Portugal, then, you know, <laughs> I, I would be the first one to tell him. I said, you better win this show, you know. So. But get back. Let me know. Let me get back to Cedric. We talk about Cedric. Okay. Cedric, okay. I say this for so many years. 100% Cedric, something we've never seen before. 100% Cedric would win the Olympia. Okay, yeah. so That's I don't I don't understand why someone would get mad for me saying he failed again because he's not nailing his condition. I mean, if you had, look at the physique, he has yeah. everything from top to bottom, everything. Mm -hmm. There's not a body part missing. He's it's, got small calves. It's well, I, who gives a fuck about the calves? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I, if he listens to this, it's gonna just a joke. That's all. I don't even think he has small calves. His calves is good. He's got yeah. every body part. If you, yeah, if I does. had to choose the physique out of yeah. all the current guys, and this Cedric, I want you to listen to this. You know, get mad yeah. at me all you want because I'm still saying what I'm saying. Yeah. If I had, if I could choose a body, I would choose Cedric's. Yeah, I think a lot of people would. I would it's absolutely the, choose Cedric's. Yeah, yeah. I and think I a lot would, of people would. and I would suffer my ass in shape. <laughs> and when, but how do we know? But how do we know he's not suffering? I, I'm, I, well, I'm not saying he's not suffering. I believe he is. I believe the problem is not his his diet. I think he does everything what he has to do. I think mm -hmm. it's his nerves that fuck. Because that's what I always you thought, see yeah. you see pictures leading up where everything is fine. It's nerves. I think he yeah. gets just too I don't know too excited or just too. Because if you all if I've been in the same boat for a couple of years. When you, yeah. you know, you're leading up pictures, I was scared the whole world with my pictures. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you get on stage and then you, you know, you do make a mistake or you believe someone that makes a mistake and then your shit goes to shits. And then next time you're like, okay, don't do the same mistake. And then when you get to yeah. it, then you start second guessing. Am I going to make it? You get nervous. <laughs> Am I going, okay, can I hold this? Can I hold this? Please, yeah, God, let me hold some, this. <laughs> you know how it some goes. People, but some people, and, and I was one of them, some people can't get out of their own head.
Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me that somebody asked me, I think on one of the podcasts, I can't remember one of the Q and a people, one of the fans asked, what would be one thing you would change if you could change anything about your career? And I literally said, I would get out of my own head and I would have enjoyed myself more because I think I did the one thing that we're talking about right now with Cedric is I was always in my own head. I think that's Cedric's thing too. If I had to put one thing, cause I, I don't, I know he works hard mm -hmm. and I know he suffers. You, you, can, so, yeah, you can look like this and not work hard. I, I get that. Yeah. And he has his job on, 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 on the side too. I mean, he's yeah. a full time active duty military. So that's, that, that ain't no joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I would have to agree with you. It's probably the only thing left is, He's just getting in his own way, but yeah. it's hard. Sometimes if you, if you have an affliction to that, if you have a, 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 like that's your thing and that's what you do, it's hard to stop it. It's not just a oh. matter of snapping your fingers. So, so if Cedric will call you today and ask you yeah. for it, man, what do I fucking need to do, man? <laughs> I got, I, I got the this. goods. I got the goods. <laughs> what, what advice do you have for me? We've had this conversation. Me and him have had this conversation. We, we used to travel together a lot for yeah. SciTech. Oh, right. You guys were both. I don't tech. have, I didn't fuck man. I don't have the answer. So, I was but what just is as it, bad as he was. What is it telling you? What do you, what does he think is the reason? He thinks the same. He thinks the same thing. Yeah. He thinks the same thing. He just gets kind of worked up. And I think it's partially expectations too, right? Mm. When the whole world is waiting for you, like I'm sure Rami probably went through this. Yeah. That's why he when went from, whole, that's why he went from one coach to the next. But I'm just saying like when the whole world is waiting for you to do something and you're trying your hardest to do it and mm -hmm. it's not happening, it's got to weigh on your mind, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure, I'm sure Rami dealt with that for a long time. And now it's got to be such a monkey off his back to finally show everybody, look, I can get in shape. But you know why? Because he finally went to that dark place that he never went to before. He didn't know. Yeah. He said, this is what I have to do. Yeah. And I kept telling him every day when we were posing, 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 posing. Every day. Because he felt like he never felt like this. And I mean, he was suffering. For yeah, it, yeah, if I tell yeah. you he was suffering, he was at a point where he wanted to call his wife and say, send me a ticket. I'm, I want to die at home with my kids. I don't want to die here. I honestly think Cedric's been there, man. I've seen him at some expos, and he just looks like he's sleeping on his feet. But he's always like that, though. He's like, he's like that even when he's not in shape. I mean, when he's not, <laughs> when he's not, when he, listen, even when he's not 100%, he's always all to himself. He sits backstage in the corner. Everybody else is over there having a good time or trying to have some kind of conversation. He's in the way back like he don't want to be affiliated with anyone. No, that doesn't, not, that's how he, no, no I, I've, I've seen this with my own eyes. No, 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 I know, but it's not, I, I just, you, we just need to rephrase it. It's not. That he doesn't want to be affiliated with anyone. Cedric's that's what just, it looks like. I said. I'm not I saying know. that's what yeah, he's thinking. Yeah. That's only what it I'm looks like. You know, it's it's a tough thing, man. And I I don't want to put anything on Cedric because I don't I don't want to say anything about anybody. But when you have your own anxieties, it can be misconstrued misconstrued in a lot of different ways. Like I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. In my twenties, coming up in this whole thing, I was known as the arrogant bodybuilder because mm. I would go to expos, I'd go to shows. I wouldn't really talk to nobody. I'd just stay with my own friends. It was more an anxiety than it was an arrogance. Mm. I just didn't want to talk to nobody. I was like scared of them right. pretty much. So I just kept to myself and my friends and people took it as, oh, that guy's a dick. So I think it's probably the same thing with Cedric. He's probably just like, you know, he's trying to deal with his own shit about the shows and maybe he's not able to go just be like everybody else. He was working with Chris Aceto for many, many years. Yep. And then all of a sudden he said, I think he left Chris. And the last yeah. time he competed, did he do it on his own or? He's doing his own thing now, yeah. Yeah. So if, if, who would you suggest to for him to use if he wanted to get with a coach? Do you have anybody in mind? Uh, man, I don't. Hani. Hani's the only person. I think it should be someone who has a lot of time to talk to him. I, I have a lot of confidence. Listen, I have a lot of confidence in Hani. Mm -hmm. And I, and. This is no slight to any other coaches. I've worked with Chris. I work with Chad Nichols. Me and you work together. Mm -hmm. I work with John Meadows. All awesome coaches. Hani somehow knows how to get the most out of his athletes, but they're all different. Mm -hmm. Like he knows how to, he's, he's a, almost like he's a master of managing their mentalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because that's what yeah. it's all about at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he could do really well with Cedric. So... If I was, if it was up to me and I could move the pieces around right now, that would be the the connection I would make. Why, why don't you just, you know, trying to convince him? Oh, there's no convincing Cedric. No, Cedric's his own dude, man. You can't, you can't convince. Listen, Cedric is his own. Literally, Cedric is his, the only person who just marches to the beat of his own fucking drum. Yeah, he does things his way, 
And uh, he's, yeah, there's no convincing. He does what he wants. I just want, so. I, I would just like to see him finally nail it, win the Olympia, and then say peace out, if he, you know, if he wanted to, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, I because, think that's what everybody, I think everybody wants that, man. Everybody likes Cedric. Everybody wants to see him do well. Mm. But he's got to do shit on his own. I think he just does shit on his own terms, you know? Yeah. Well, I hope, so. I hope he, uh, and you know what, listen, he might, he might be able to nail it by himself if he does it another yeah. time. So I'll, it would be yeah. good to see him on stage. And maybe, yeah. maybe you're right, you know, for him, nobody talking about him, maybe he doesn't have that stress. You know, yeah. that weighs on his mind, and maybe he'll just show up last minute and upsets the whole card. That's absolutely possible. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Hey, do you think uh, me and James had this conversation on the podcast a couple weeks ago? Do you think Hottie could beat Rami? Y yeah. You do? Yeah. Even though Rami's your boy? No, this has nothing to do with my boy. You asked me a question. <laughs> I know. I know. I tell, yeah. I, listen, I think Hardy, William... Brandon, they can all beat Rami. <laughs> they beat him before. Well, wait a minute. Let me rephrase If Rami the is then. not on. And Rami's, Let me yeah. Rami's is known to not be consistent, so he's not consistent. Yeah. Now, if Rami is on, no. No. So if Rami of last year, or even a little better, can Hadi beat him? No. Okay. Okay. No. So no. So he's walking away with it pretty much in your mind then? No. Hottie's no, little... because he's not proven uh, to be consistent. But I'm saying if he's in shape. If he's in shape, I believe it, yes. So there's nobody, because Hadi's probably the only one that you could see beating Rami. I said that Hadi is the most dangerous guy in the whole lineup as of right now. Yeah. The most dangerous. Flex? What do you think about Flex Lewis? I will tell you when I see him step on stage next to these guys. Because <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be, it, you know, it's going to be something that, you know, we can't judge him by what he looked like as a 212 guy. So no one knows yeah. how big is he really going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's going to look like, like he did to the 212, he's going to be too small. Yeah. He's going to be too small because he's gonna, he was outsized by Hardy in the 212. Okay. Yeah, I, I suspect he's going to be a lot bigger, though. I, me too. But what yeah. is he going to look like compared to, you know, when we talk about condition, because he's known for being very consistent with condition. Mm. But uh, I believe he's, uh, he's definitely up there. I mean, if Hardy can play second in the Olympia, last year's uh, finals. Yeah. Then I think that uh, Flex Lewis and Nick Walker have a very good shot at being up there. Battling. Nick Walker does too. Battling. Do you, think, do you think Flex Lewis can beat Hottie? If uh, he's what we think he's going to be. Well, I don't know what I'm th what do you think he's going to be. Man, I Give me, I have give a, me at least a number. <laughs> I have a strange feeling he's going to be like... 230-ish? I was going to say 235 is the number it was in my head, but because I know, I know for years he just wouldn't even train in the offseason because he could put on muscle so easily that he would just take months off. Yeah, and was, then just get ready and just get ready for the Olympia. And I'm like, that was, this guy's that, got a full and, and that year was of how, training. And that was how many years ago? Two years ago now. How, how old is Flex now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I know he's younger than me. I just don't know if he's late 30s or yeah. mid 30s. I don't know. I would say. A flex, the way I could, can see him come in in the 230, somewhere in 235, in the condition that he brought as a 212 athlete. Yeah. It's going to be very dangerous. Everybody better be in real good shape, otherwise they're going to get beat, no matter who it is. Yeah. If these guys are not on, they won't be able to beat him. And the only one that, where I'm 100% sure is going to be on is Hardy. And I believe Hardy this year will be the Best Hardy ever. Why do you say that? Because I, I, I see how he's working right now. He's putting on size. And he yeah. still brings that, that crazy condition that I miss on these guys now. I miss the striations. Yeah. Not two, yeah. three lines. I mean deep cut yeah. separations yeah. In, the, in, 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 the, in the chest, the striations. Just all around. The guy looks, Why? his legs look like there's literally nothing and just a little bit of skin pulled right across the quad why is hottie able to do that and nobody else is because he has a different level of conditioning i think this has something to do with the genetics i think you know some yeah. people can get harder than others you know yeah i'm not saying it's not possible for everybody i mean uh, it's possible but what do you have to do to get there you don't know yeah yeah you don't yeah. know unless you find out and mm -hmm. once you get it then you have the formula but until then you know why do people why people have to look back 
uh, and I'm talking about most of the guys today, why do they have to look back four or five, six years and say, oh, if I can get that condition again, I'll be fucking awesome. <laughs> I you don't know? know, man. Ian, Ian, Ian hit his stride now. Well, I said, guys are starting. Guys are starting to get in good shape now. I mean, look at Nick. At the, Nick in New York was I, no, no. See, now we go into yeah. the new generation. I'm talking yeah. about the older generation. You know, yeah, yeah. Ian, Nick, Blessing, uh, Hunter. This is going to be the guy, the new generation fighting for the Olympia in a couple of years. Blessing's got the longest way to go. Yeah, he has. He has the longest way. He's got a. He's got a. He's only because he's got a nice shape, but he's got a bigger frame to mm -hmm. fill out. Yeah, but he's, he's going to be because he's twenty nine years old. So he's uh, he's yeah. up there. He's up there. He needs a couple more years to put yeah. the weight on and do the right thing, and then he's up there with those guys. You know what I mean? And yeah. and and yeah. this is the new generation. You know, we're, yeah. we're obviously sure that the sport's not dying. So we got guys, you know, coming to, to excuse the older guys that eventually will will will, will retire sooner or later. Yeah, well, it's funny because things are starting to move quickly, right? Because now Dexter's finally retired. Mm -hmm. Phil, Phil is leaving, and you got Brandon. Brandon's a little bit older now. Who knows how long he's going to stay around? Yeah. Can Brandon win the and, Olympia again? I would love to say yes because I think Brandon is an awesome person. But Hottie just Hottie and Rami just have too much. Yeah, I think they Hottie. To... I think Hottie. Is, is it, what, what would Brandon have to do? Bring up the legs. You think that can ever happen after so many years? If, if that's the thing, I think I said it in one of my podcasts. I think if Brandon had bigger legs, he could beat everyone mm -hmm. because his shape is so nice. But I think I just don't think he can overcome that leg size. And I don't think at 38 or ever how old he yeah. is, it's hard to imagine him putting on like a drastic amount of muscle on his legs all of a sudden. Yeah, I think if so, you have a leg issue after, I don't know, 20 years of working out or 15 years, then why all of a sudden, what, what are you going to do different to make yeah. his legs grow? The, I, I think, he, I believe that um, he's going to try, I didn't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. I believe he's going to try to match Rami in size as much as possible and he's going to yeah. go overboard and not going to bring yeah. the condition that he needs and then Hadi's going to benefit, benefit from this all day. Yeah, or if he was smart, he would play to his own strengths because you got to think about this Rami's going to be the odd man out because if you look at the top five you're looking at uh Flex Lewis just hypothetically mm -hmm. Brandon Curry Bonac Flex Lewis possibly a Roly and a Nick Walker mm -hmm. where's uh, Roly where's Roly going to qualify <laughs> I don't know he's going to pop up somewhere so I'm saying like wait what if minute, he shows wait, up wait a minute wait a minute what if he minute, shows up in Chicago minute, wait, no wait a minute <laughs> I, I tell you where I think he's going to be Portugal? Yeah. No, don't fuck with my Nathan. No, nope, I'm telling I'm... you, he's right there in Holland. What, where else could he be? Yeah, that's possible. To Nathan see... can beat him. Nathan can beat him if he's not in shape, though. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody. I can mean, beat... Roly, Roly's, Roly's not very consistent. Sometimes he's shredded. Yeah. Sometimes he's off. You, you think? Never know. You think Nathan is a better bodybuilder than Roly? No. No. Well. <laughs> it depends. How be do you honest, quantify? Be honest. Be honest. I'm going to be honest. How do you quantify that? How do you quantify the statement? Are we saying is is ten out of ten, ten? Ten competitions. Who wins more? I probably have to say Roly, mm. but I don't. I don't know for sure because Roly, out of those ten competitions, might be bang on in shape four times, mm -hmm. whereas Nathan would be bang on in shape nine times. So that means so, so that means you could you believe in somewhere in you that Roly could beat Nathan even not being a hundred percent. Potentially, depending mm. how far off a hundred percent he is. It's, it's so hard to break people down, but that's why I like to talk to you because we can do yeah. it. And guys, don't get mad at us. We, we love you guys, man. We want you all <laughs> to win. We just sometimes got to keep it real, and but, we, but we're I not just, doing but this. I, <laughs> but I just said out of ten times, yeah, I think Nathan nails it nine times, which means. Out of 10, I think I would have to pick Nathan only because I don't think Roly nails it as often. If Nathan, Nate, if Nathan, I, I hope he's not doing the mistake of trying to get too big, but it looks like he is. He's yeah, but his waist, is, his waist is still in check. Yes, but I'm talking about the condition at the end. I'm not worried about his waist. He's going to be in shape. Okay, well, if you say so. You think I'm, he's too late? Let me, let me guess. You've seen recent photos. And you no, 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 no. I said this two years yeah. ago. Yeah. I said this two years ago. So when he came on the scene... He was great, yeah. and then he started fading. He just started oh, you not. Get, you, he, got, you don't think he got in shape as much? 
No, nah, he didn't. He, he just got he's got too big, and he lost some of that trademark, that, some of that the, the detail that I wanted to see. That's what we were talking about earlier. When you put on too much mass, you start yeah, to lose some of that. That's separation. why, and I feel when he, uh, I just feel that you know he's doing that cool way thing, and this is all size, and you know ah, you got to get big, and, and 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 when I see him train, I see exactly what he's doing. So I hope it works out for him because I like Nathan, I really do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I really hope I really hope he likes because it's going to be hard for him because these young guys in the last two years came up, you know. Yeah, he's battling think, these young guys. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people, man. Yeah. Well, in my in my mind, and this is not just because we signed him. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I have him on par with Sergio, and that might be just my own mm-hmm. bias. No, he has. Un- he's great shape. He's got all the yeah. size in the world. What he doesn't need to do is get any bigger. Well, he. I need. I think he to really, to really get in the in the talks of the top three, top five. I think he could, if he if he's developed his back more in that time off. I think that's going to shock a lot of people. I think that was the only area maybe he was lagging a little bit, but his overall shape and structure, and he does come in condition most of the time. I've never really seen him out of shape. Um, I have him on par with a Sir. I really want to see him stand next to Sergio. To me, mm. that's like a really nice matchup because they have not similar structures, but kind of similar shape, longer torso, smaller waist, you know, big arms. Um, I kind of just want to see those two stand next to each other. I think, Sergio might be bigger in stature. He's got you a wider think? clavicle. He's, Sergio's deceiving, man. It's, man, I, I remember I walked into Columbus uh, two years ago. Uh, I walked into a supplement store in Columbus at one of these expo things. And Sergio's standing there, and his shoulders are like four feet across. And I just didn't, you don't realize how big Sergio is until you walk up to no, him. And you're no, like, no, he's big. He's big. He's got shoulders, arms, you know, it stands out. I know. But I just but mean Nathan, the whole, Nathan is yeah. a big dude. He's full. But he's, Nathan is. But Nathan is a more compact person. He's got the same amount of muscle, if not maybe a little bit more, but his structure is more compact. Sergio reminds me of a Kuklo. There's very big guys, mm-hmm. right? But so, I, I, I prefer the the thick, full round look that, that Nathan yeah. has. That's more like yeah. my, my cup of tea, to be honest. The, the danger is, though, that when someone with Sergio's structure fills it in, now you have a guy who's... Sergio, massive and muscular what Sergio does better than anybody better than any guys is mm. display his physique yeah yeah he's Presentation. really good as pres- yeah, presenting his physique to the fullest where you see things that others have but they don't know how to show it yeah, yeah. so and I, I don't know if that's because he pays attention to to the detail but it's just he just comes alive when he hits some shots Okay. Almost, it's funny, you know, when you see when you see Sergio pose, it's almost like you see the passion in his face a bit. So even if, even if it's almost like even if he doesn't look as good as somebody else, your eye is drawn to him. Mm. It could be because of the presentation, could be because of his confidence, whatever it is, it's it's there on stage. Other people don't have it. Yeah. Well, so, I'll I tell know. you what, they don't have. They don't have a father that was famous. <laughs> That's a big shooter. That's a big shooter, Phil. I think he has a big shooter, Phil, and I think that that's why he is what he does. What he does because he wants to. He wants to. He has a proud name to to to. He he wants to be up there. He wants to make his dad proud by achieving possibly the same thing he did, with a way way higher standard of quality guys on stage. Yeah, I mean the pressure. The pressure is him and you know someone like a hunter must go through, or probably on another level that we we don't even understand. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So. Honda has his dad there, though, and gets all the advice he can handle. You know, yeah. I think it helps him a lot, you know. Plus, he's, you know, he don't have to worry about getting his supplements and all that stuff. You know, it's... it's. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he's got the company built, companies built in. He's got the plan B <laughs> set for life. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a little easier. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think, yeah. I don't want to say it's easier. He still had to put the work in. But it's... If you don't have, like, you know, I got to get ready for my plan B for after I retire, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be Hunter Labrada. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10.
Yeah. I mean, you know. Sergio set himself up to it, too. He's got his own company now. But he's, so he, that's. But yeah, but he set that up. Yeah. So, so, so no, no, no. I agree with you. Sir, Hunter definitely has a base that's mm. easier for him to kind of just yeah. focus on bodybuilding. He was raised as a bodybuilder, I would almost say. Kind of, he, yeah. he was raised to do this. So, and, and, and yeah. you listen, and he's doing a great job. Yeah. Let me talk about you for a second. Okay. I see you still posting pictures and still training hard. And what's happening, man? What's going on? Do you still want to compete? I have uh, these bullshit dreams of coming back one day that probably are never going to come true. Okay, how old are you now for what? 42. 42. So what is your dream that you think that you think you can still... If I could ideally have my, like, uh, moment in the sun sunset would be, like, to qualify for the Olympia, do one more Olympia, and then never show up again. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. That's probably not going to happen, but it just... That's <laughs> no, see, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, even want let I'm me, a realist, me, Dennis. I'm not, I'm not one of these dreamers. I believe... Let me make you know, some I'm, notes. Let's, right, let's, make some let, notes. let's talk about your dream. You just want right. to qualify for the Olympia. Okay. So now, you're 42 years today. Four? Yeah. Hold on. 42. <laughs> okay? No, listen, you look good. Are you going to coach me? Is that what we're doing no, right no, now? No, 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 no. I'm just going to see <laughs> where we could go. So 42, right. so you need to qualify. So you set yourself a time, like, the next year well, or two? Well, I was thinking... Uh, the Toronto Pros in December. Oh, so you're talking about this year. So I thought if I do this, well, how the fuck long am I going to wait? I'm already 42. Yeah. <laughs> so, well. So I figure the Toronto Pros in December. Why the Toronto Pro? Because it's in Canada? Ah, it's right here. It's right home. So if I, even if I don't win, that way all my friends and family would be there and I can retire there. Oh, so do you want, this, you want to make this your last show? Listen. This Unless is, you this qualify. Is, this is the honest to God truth. I probably won't compete again. But if I do in an ideal world, I would do Toronto if I I don't pl have any delusions of winning. I would just do Toronto, show up at my best, and kind of say goodbye, right? If for some reason I won, I would do the Olympia and say goodbye there. Mm. That's, in the, that's in the dream world. But, yeah. dude, well, most but, like, listen. But listen, dude, because you said because Toronto was moved to December. I mean, I'm I'm going. I mean, looking at the shows we had this year so far, I mean, like, how much yeah. less stack could it be? Yeah, so, but I feel like no, I feel like no one's going to show up. That's what I'm saying. I, mean, I can just walk in and take what a win. I, and <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I said he's waiting till December when everybody's <laughs> fat and round. <laughs> he's going to jump in the show, peeled yep. out of his yep. mind, and he's going to qualify at a show with yeah. him and JD Boogaloo next to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever gets me to the Olympia. I don't know. I, I think I think there will be it will be, be stacked with none but Canadians. Yeah, there'll be some Canadians. Listen, I, like I said, I, I don't believe that, that the, the the country will be open for international travelers by then. Not Canada, the yeah. way you guys been doing it. Yeah, well, I mean, Antoine just tore his bicep, so he won't. He's do out. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing. That's not I'm funny. Not, I'm That's only not... laughing because you bring him up. Well, I brought him up because I'm like, we're yeah. just going to take out the Canadians, right? So what about Antoine's Ian? You think Ian wouldn't try to requalify right away so he can just take a whole year to focus on the Olympia? I can see Ian doing that just to fuck with me. Just to make sure I don't, just to, just to make sure I don't win. You go, you go fuck around, have Chris Bumps to yeah. do the open just to fuck with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. No, um, um, Reagan, Reagan. There's Reagan, there's Quentin, uh, Aria. Okay. There's, there's some good bodybuilders. Listen, I don't, to be honest with you, Dennis, I'm doing the podcast thing three times a week hmm. and I'm running a supplement company and I just, I that's, love training, that's, man. That's why I'm bringing this up. I, I know you, yeah. I know, I know you, I know you love training and, and I'm, I'm speaking to you as the older guy now. I'm yeah. giving you yeah. some elderly advice. Yeah. You are successful with what you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you would be, if you still would, would still have the potential to win the Olympia, I would still say the same thing to you that I'm telling you right now. In, in, in your position right now, when people ask me, what, 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 what advice do you have? I said, always follow the money because mm -hmm. you know how much money is in bodybuilding. At the end of the day, you know, if you would have been 20, 25 now, it would, it would be a totally different conversation because yeah. there's, there's a long-term goal that you can still achieve. But at your point right now, you do not want to... Let me give you an example. And I'm not saying this to bash him. I'm saying this because he made it, made it a clear point. He said, Juan Morel, yeah. 
Juan Morel started a business from nowhere, from her doing the cookies for him for his cheat meal on Sunday, to some yeah. very, very successful business. Yeah. And now, and you know, running a business that's successful or that's, you know, you want to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So you can't really do this over here and you do that over there. You're already doing different things with podcasts and the supplement yeah. company. So what did he look like at the Olympia? Yeah, that was his, I know. That was his worst showing. And I had him here on the podcast. He said the same. Like, listen, once you do that, you can't focus. You can't, your mind is not there when it's there making sure that, the, you know, this doesn't yeah. go away. Because if that goes away, what am I doing with this? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I, I mean? It. So, yeah. and, and, no. and, and what you do right now, you do so well. Why would you try to focus on something that will maybe take a little bit focus away from what you're doing at the moment? Well, and that's why I say it probably won't happen because... I will always train hard and I'll diet and do all these things, but only in an F, only in the event that it won't take away from what I'm doing. Right. The second I see myself getting lazy about the podcast or the the, the business, even more importantly, yeah. suffering, I'm out. Right. Because the bit the bodybuilding thing for me now, I've already done what I want to do. You know, I, I never set out to be Mr. Olympia. I set out to win a couple small shows, and I did. And um, I really got nothing to prove. For right. me, if I do it, it's just for fun, right? And if, if, if fun starts affecting business, then there's no way I'm going to do it. Mm. Um, but the thought's always there. I think it's fun to just think about. Because at the end of the day, if I, if I really, really, like, dig down and think about it, <clears throat> I probably won't get on stage. Yeah. Is this when was the last time? Because I, I, I tell people all the time, there is no balance in bodybuilding. Yeah. Actually, I tell people all the time, there's no balance in anything when you want to be the best at it. So I don't think you can run a business and run a podcast and be a good bodybuilder all at the same time because it all takes, like you said, with Juan, it just takes too much. Yeah. Even if you can manage it time-wise, your mind has to focus on something yeah. more than the others. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't imagine it will happen at all. I just, like I said, it's just a fun, a fun thought to have and, you know, you, you know Maybe. yourself better than anyone. So if you, <laughs> and I know the that. The thing is. Because I, I know that from working with you at that time. You get to a point in your diet where you. <laughs> yeah. Where you're not I'm running. Off. Where you're running nothing. <laughs> 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 that podcast would be lights out. That hostile sign yeah. back there would be upside down. It would take a break. Yeah. Take, yeah. Take think break, about yeah. that. I know. You know. You know. Yeah. You know. You get to that point. Yeah. No, I do. And. The thing is with the with the company, I feel okay because I run the company with my wife and and she does a lot of the work too. So I know if I need to take a break for four weeks at the end, she can keep things running smoothly. The podcast nobody can do but me, but I think fans would understand if I said, Hey, I'm taking two or three weeks off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I don't want to close the door completely. But one day I will. Like one day I'll just stop talking about it. Yeah. But I think I think I'm not ready to completely close the door, but it's only like a 50% chance at this yeah. point but, that but, I'll ever get on stage. I, I just think, you know, if you, you know... You know, sorry to interrupt you. Regardless of competing, though, I'm not going to change the way I train, though. Yeah. Like, I just love doing it this way. Like, I like eating, you know, five, six I meals know, a day. But, I like... Yeah, but don't you think at, at a certain age, you know, now it's you, you came into the sport healthy, you want to leave the sport healthy. Don't you think it's time to... Give the body the rest that he probably wants. Well, I do. I do agree that the minute I close that door, I'm going to drop like 40 pounds. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I don't. Like I'm two. I'm 285 or 284 today. I don't plan on being. Like I'm going to drop down to 240, 250 or something once I finally just say that's enough, right? Mm -hmm. And part of the thing about Toronto is this: I got to lose weight anyway, whether I retire or not. So I figure, why not drop some fat? And if you look good enough, get on stage. And if you don't look good enough, you got to lose that fat anyway. Like, I can't be walking around at 285, right? So regardless well, you of you can, I, but you probably wouldn't be in your best interest in the future. Yeah, it's not, it's not healthy, right? So the way I see it is I got to drop weight anyway. I might as well do it. And then if I look good enough to get on stage, I will. And if I don't, then I got to lose the weight regardless. Hmm. So that's kind of um, where... Unless you rebound back to 290. <laughs> which is totally possible. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm saying it. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to diet down. If I don't want to compete, then I don't know. And then I'm just going to keep going from there and go down to, to 160. Now nah, you're going to rebound. I can't help it, man. I love food. I don't uh, know what the fuck wrong Yeah, is. you sure do, man. He called. I remember you called me. like, I don't know if you sent me a text or you called me. You drive it in the car. You said, yeah, man, I, I, I can't do this no more. <laughs> 
I can't do this no more. You said to me, eat some lettuce. That's what you said to me. <laughs> eat some fuck. No, I remember driving. I still remember the road I was driving down. It was uh, some back road. I just got in my car, went for a drive. Because I'm like, I got to eat something. I'm like, so let me get out of the fucking house. So I get in my car, I go for a drive. And I still remember being on this back road and I called you and I'm like, Dennis, I'm going to break. And you're like, don't break. It's only a couple weeks to go. And I'm like, <laughs> like I can't fucking do it. I got to, I got to eat something. Oh, and you're like, go eat some lettuce with mustard. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. People don't understand yeah. how, how, how deep it can really go for people to get to that breaking point. And Rami was there a couple of times this year while he was in yeah. my house. I don't even yeah. know from before he came to my house while he was in my house. He was yeah. at that point two, three times. Yeah. And I'm so glad. I'm really so glad that it all worked out in the end because now he knows yeah. What, it, what it takes. Well, because now he sees the reward. So he's like, you know what? If I have to go to that place again, he knows. it's worth it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And I and I saw that too. You know, I saw that too. Man, remember that? Pre that was probably the most shredded I've ever been. And partially because I was threw up a bunch of times at the end there. But like that show is the most shredded I've ever what been. What in on Dallas? Stage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you and almost have... didn't make it on stage. You backstage I... breaking, yeah. breaking. Well, because I, I had thrown up a bunch <laughs> of times the, the night before. And I was laying on the floor dehydrated. Yeah. I remember laying out, laying in the yeah. pump-up room, just dehydrated, shaking. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, you better fucking get out there, man. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fuck. So I got I believe, up. Yeah, it, I believe that was the best you ever looked to. Somehow when I got on stage, I just didn't didn't feel anything anymore. And then yeah. I almost fucking beat Branch, but I think he just had too much muscle for me. But I think um, he had a little of the hometown favoritism going on, too. I mean, you know, it's Dallas, awesome. I mean, it's his home. You know what I mean? You want to knock yeah. somebody out of his own house, you you know, you might as well walk backwards, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but you look, yeah. the, the look was, listen, when you step on stage, I said, like, fucking five minutes ago, he wasn't going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, I, I don't think that your mind, your body was as, it could have been even better if your mind yeah. would have been good yeah. this whole past hour. Yeah. Well, that if I hadn't thrown up a bunch of times, I know the, it's not. It's before. not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Imagine you would have looked the same, and you would have been confident. Yeah, because you didn't go on stage really confident. It stopped. I did. It's, it's, I, I think I did at the night show. I think I was more no, no, no. I'm talking about prejudging now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the night show, you were good. But you know what you're saying? That goes for every show I've ever done. Yeah. You know how many times somebody said that? You know, what I mean? like my wife has said that to me, or a coach has said that to me. Is like, hey, man, you gotta like. You got to just cool it. Like your mind is fucking with you. Mm. And that goes back to what we were talking about with Cedric and myself. It's like sometimes you can be your worst, own worst enemy. Yeah. Like yeah. me and, uh, me and uh, who the fuck was it I had on the show? I think it was Dave Tate. I can't remember who I was talking to about this, but like we were talking about winners that like become champions and whether they be just believe it all the time that they're supposed to be champions or whether the confidence builds as they get better. Mm. And it's like a, it's an interesting conversation. Like, when you took third at the Olympia, did fourth, you believe? Fourth, fourth. Oh, fourth. Sorry. I gave you an extra. You should have just taken it. <laughs> I wish. I wish I would have that bronze medal to prove it. <laughs> no, but like when you took fourth, did you believe you were supposed to be fourth? Like, did you know you belonged there? Yeah. Or were, yeah, 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 yeah. That year, yes. I was, I was, I was, that was the first year. I mean, I was, I was confident every year because I looked good leading up to the shows always. Yeah. I yeah. was always on target. I was always kept the size, but that year was special. Why? I, I, I made, it was a change. I switched from Milos to to uh, to Chad. Oh, okay. And it was a different prep for me because you know how it is when you switch to another coach. It's a different motivation because now you don't want to prove something to yourself. You want to yeah. prove something to the coach. You're almost more focused. For whatever reason, yeah. you, I, yeah. I have something to prove to you. Why are athletes worried about not letting the coaches down? Yeah. Well, I'm like, worry about your damn self. Yeah. You yeah, know? I agree. So, and, and I think it was just a different approach. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it was, yeah, well, yeah, I guess it had to tell something to do with chat, but it was, I was just, everything was just smooth. Mm -hmm. There was no, there was n no obstacles. There was no nothing. It was like, you know, yeah. it was just, everything just happened for a reason. So yeah. I was like, damn. So I felt like this would be the best. Did you ever struggle with anything backstage or any doubts? Like, were you or were you always pretty confident going into shows? I was always worried about catching a cramp on stage. That was my but that was main. Your only, but you weren't. But you weren't worried about the way you looked. No, I mean, listen. Okay. I mean, 
most of the time, depending on what show. I mean, there was <laughs> a couple of shows where I was like, yeah. Shit, I said, would it look stupid if I pull out now? I mean, backstage, oiled up. <laughs> I was like, what can I fake? What could I fake? <laughs> that was uh, Denver, Colorado. Yeah. That was, what was it? I, some, I think it was Sean Ray's show. I was like, man, me and Branch both. We came off the Why? New York Pro at, at, at uh, uh, one and two. And then yeah. we went to uh, the Colorado Pro. It was Colorado Pro. Yeah. And uh, we both sucked ass. And we both knew it. <laughs> we both came in as the high favorites. And shit, George Farah beat me. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. And I remember, oh, and my wife told me somewhere, it was in the elevator in the hotel, George Farah was like, ah, I beat DJ. I was like, he wasn't happy about beating me. I was like, God damn, I got eighth. Me and Branch how, going in as the high favorite. I was, how, what, what, how long into your career was that, though? That, that was, was 2000. No, that was 2000, 2006. Oh, so you, yeah, but that wasn't far from. You, I came you off a second place to New York Pro. Oh, so you were just off. I was, I was, I was so far off. I was still on the plane when I got on stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny that you say branches. A branch is never off. But, but, uh, off, both of us. <clears throat> wow. You know who Crazy. won the show? Oh, uh, Kai Green. I remember. Was that the Dirty Diana posing routine? I don't remember what pose routine it was because I didn't Colorado. make it. I didn't. I didn't stay that long. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I was like, I don't give a fuck no more because I know I had second or third call out. Me, yeah. me and Branch are thinking the same call out. But that was a really good Kai Green. I remember that was that, the, show. that was the best Kai Green. Yeah, was he small, was peeled, peeled, peeled out of his mind. But yeah. The, uh, yeah. two weeks before, a week before, he, he got seventh or eighth. Yeah, yeah, but he uh, looked amazing at that show. I remember that. Yeah, so that was yeah, Amazing. that was the day where I knew. Her. But other than that, you know, you, you go somewhere, you know how it is. Especially I'm just the Olympics because I always count the Olympics, and and I qualified 11 years. I never had a problem qualifying. So yeah, going to the Olympia, you know, you you sit backstage, and, you know, everybody wait with their clothes on. You don't want to be the first one. Yeah, you know, I, I never had that problem. I don't take my shit off. I'm pump up a little bit first, <laughs> get that swole going. That's because <laughs> you're always big as fuck. I pump, I pump yeah. up just a little bit, just a little yeah. bit, and I yeah. take my shit off. And then uh, you know, you look at the mirrors, you know, and some mirrors would be like, "Hey, shit, this is, yeah, no, nah, it'll, right. right. it'll be all right. It'll be all right. This mirrors can fuck with you." Yeah, I know. So, I know. So at the end of the day, what I used to do is, I I pay attention to the reactions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when people look at you and don't say nothing, you yeah. know you look good. When people yeah. say, oh, man, yeah, you look good, they don't know. They know you don't look good enough for them to be scared. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. I just go yeah. by reactions. Because everybody wants to like this. See, you biting their rice cakes, looking at people, you know, as soon as you turn around. <laughs> and I look in the mirror. I can see you in the mirror looking at me. Yeah. You know, that was the fun part about bodybuilding. I loved it. Is hey, that what you miss most? Yeah, I don't really miss competing, but... I miss certain certain times, like just before, you know, backstage yeah. at the Olympia and, 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 you know, after pre-judging or bef after pre-judging, before the finals, when people all relax now, now we start talking again. Yeah, you know, yeah, we've yeah. been friends all year. Yeah. And then when we get to the show, since it starts at the damn athletes meeting, we'll sit next to each other like we've seen each other for the first damn time. Like, hey, you, know, yeah. you don't know me? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then after yeah. the pre-judging is over, then everybody's more relaxed again. So I, I miss yeah. the camaraderie. I miss going on tours after the Arnold and after the Olympia, going on these tours in Europe. That was the best time we had because now you really get to know guys, you know. Do you, is there a void at all, though, with the – I know you're really relaxed now and you enjoy your life the way mm -hmm. it is, but do you miss that, like, laser focus that you have to have? I, I put it, I, I still have that focus, but I use it for other things than bodybuilding. But it's not the same, though. It's not the I same. I have it too. It's not, not the, the same, same. But if you see how I act with training, I mean, I train, I try to train five days a week. If it's not five yeah. days, it doesn't bother me. I go to yeah. the gym and I, I'll be honest, I don't even sweat. No, but like I asked, I don't mean just necessarily physically. I just mean like I asked Dennis Wolf. I said, do you miss, I asked him the same question. I said, do you miss having that like, thing that you're so focused on that nothing else like everything else else in your life is a blur uh, no because uh, you know what I, at that moment that's all i knew yeah. but i didn't realize that everybody around me suffered yeah. while, while i was like that too because and, and i'm my wife is still with me so i mean you know <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know i didn't know what an ass i was sometimes 
until later when I realized that certain things she could say to me or do with me that I wasn't even able to do. She wouldn't even ask me because I was yeah. like, because I was just so focused, you know? And that's why I'm not yeah. surprised that most, most relationships, married or not, just don't work when you are a competitive yeah. bodybuilder and compete several times a year. It just, it's just not that easy. There's too much selfishness involved. Yeah, and totally. Most, I was most, selfish yeah. times 10. Yeah, there's not very many women that can handle that. Like, you get lucky the odd time. Like, my wife dealt with it and still deals with my selfishness sometimes. But, yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah there's not many that can deal with it. And a lot of relationships fall apart because of it. Mm. But, I don't know. I mean, I think that's the one thing I miss about it, though. I miss... Uh, it's it's cool because I found other things to put my focus into. Mm -hmm. But I do miss that, like... It's almost like everything else in your life is blurry and there's only this one really fine point that you worried about every day. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the one thing I miss about it. Um, I, I'm just way more relaxed now and I can tell that I'm, I've talked to people that thinks that, I, you know, you go to the gym, I, people talk to me in the middle of a set and I'll stop and talk to them. Some that was never possible back in the days. <laughs> you would have asked me a question and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You can't see I'm training? Yeah, you know, yeah. that, that would have been me. Or I would have yeah. headphones you know, back then, you know, the regular cable headphones yeah. and put the cable in my pocket because I wouldn't have a CD player or whatever. I just, yeah. when people say, I was like, I can't hear you. <laughs> Keep going, <laughs> you know? And now hey, I'm how different. Long, how long after your retirement did you still train like that? Or was it automatically you just relaxed? No, 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 no. I, I well, I, th I think I told you that before. I, I completely stopped 2010 with everything. Yeah. And then I was gone for two years. I trained... You know, but trained, you know, because you can't stop immediately because it's yeah. not going to be possible. But yeah. you're going to you, you, you're going to you're going to you're going to set yourself a, a time limit for certain things. It's like I'm not going to be in the gym for three hours. I'm going <laughs> to do this in an hour or in 45 minutes. But yeah. then I came back in 2012 for the uh, for the Masters. Oh, that's right. That's so right. I kicked it into gear 11 weeks, or not under 12 weeks before the Masters. I kicked it into gear and did that. And after that, I thought this is it. First thing I did yeah. was I said, let me go get some tattoos, make sure I'm not going back on stage. I'm trying to protect myself from myself, you know? Uh, I so I got yeah. tatted up. I said, you know, and, 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 and I told myself, now it's, and, and I already had a plan B set for me, you know, with the coaching, yeah. you know, with the things. Yeah. And I was still, you know, working for AMI. I, I had my contract for 15 years, so. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I just started slowly. Because every time I traveled, this is how it started with the training. I, when I was home, I was solid with my training. Yeah. As soon as yeah. I travel, I wouldn't train. I yeah. would never train traveling. Like, to this day. I'm, I'm bad like that too, yeah. 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 You, I, yeah. I've been to, I, I go to Australia for two months. I didn't yeah. train because I, I'm not home. <laughs> I'm out of yes. my environment. It's not working right. for me. Yeah. I, I, I don't get how people can... Ronnie Coleman is the worst. He travels yeah. to... Uh, I, I don't care. Name a country. He will yeah. land two in the morning. He will ask someone to open up a gym so he can train. I know. I, I know. Couldn't, I couldn't I'm, do it. Okay, thank God you said that. I'm more like you, man. If I'm if I'm out of my element or my regimen's all fucked mm -hmm. up, yeah, I I just take a day. I'm like I gotta take a day off. Yeah, I'm not I'm training. Like, yeah, I'm not I, training. I, I need everything to kind of be in order. Yeah, and the good thing me. is I travel so much that I didn't train almost five six months a year. So that so got, that helped me. And yeah. now you come back, now you start training. Now it's like, you know, I had a long layoff. Now you got to yeah. slow it down. That's how I got used to taking it easy in the gym. Because yeah. at the end yeah. of the day, that's all I'm doing right now is take it easy, get my little pump on. I mean, I, yeah. did, I did have an injury uh, two years ago. I tore my, my biceps tendon. Did I tell you? No. I taking a shit, reaching back, trying to wipe my ass, tore my biceps tendon. Are you fucking serious? I'm dead serious. I couldn't make this story up. I tore my... <laughs> right? you? you know it's connected up here in the shoulder, right? Yes. So I'm, yes. I'm in Germany. I go to the FIBO. I'm at my mom's house, you know, two days yeah. before the FIBO. I'm up there taking a good one. Yeah. I will reach back with the toilet paper because at my house, I got the damn ass flush. I don't wipe, you know, I don't have you toilet got the bidet. paper. You got the bidet, yeah. So my shoulder way out of shape, of course. <laughs> so I reach back for it. I kid you not. I reach back and it's like, Pow. it's like, what Come the on. fuck? I swear, what the, kind of like, you know, you get electrocuted. Yeah. So, and it was like, and it was sore immediately, sore, right up here. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, damn. I said, I almost tore my shoulder. So I went on to the FIBO for four days, lines. People take pictures. You know how Shaking it is. hands and, and they want to yeah. come in, hey. Oh. And over the pam, pam. After three days, I said, I'm not coming on Sunday. I didn't go. I said, I got to go yeah. home. So I went yeah. back to the U.S. 
and I had to, uh, I went to my uh, uh, physical therapist or chiropractor, or whatever. And he said, "Man, get an MRI done," because yeah. I thought it was the shoulder. Yeah. Because I didn't feel nothing doing biceps. I was like, "This is the shoulder." So I did yeah. an MRI, and he saw that my biceps tendon, this is about the size of my middle, uh, my little pinky finger, was yeah. just hanging off a little thread. Oh, fuck. So he said, "It's your biceps tendon." So yeah. I said, now what? He said, no, we got we to gotta connect it. He said, we're going to take it off and we connect it right in your armpit, somewhere in there. Oh, so I said, uh, when? I said, right away, because when it pops, this is just a little bit hanging on. You shouldn't do nothing with this arm because then it's going to end up somewhere here. We're going to have to cut you open yeah. and pull it up. Oh, so I God. said, but I got to go to Mexico. I got to MC this show. Yeah. So I went to Mexico that, the same weekend as a one arm bandit. I did not move this arm <laughs> for the whole weekend. I was like, I can't tear this little bit off what's in there. Yeah. Came back, <laughs> did the surgery. And I remember before he put me to sleep, he said, while I'm in there, I'm going to look at your shoulder. Yeah. You know, that, you know, I said, okay, he's going in there. So he disconnected the, uh, the tendon and he connected somewhere down here. And he said, yeah. while he was in there, he saw that my, my, my shoulder was fucked. He said, he put two anchors in there, labrum tear, rotator cuff, fixed my shoulder at the same time. I didn't even know I had shoulder issues. Holy fuck. Okay, can I, I just have one question? Yeah. Why don't you lie to people? Lie for what? Why don't you tell people you tore your bicep wiping your ass? Because I, if I lie, if I have to remember what I said. And, you know, the truth is always easy to remember. Just say I tore it doing biceps. What the fuck? No, I, I lie. I, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm cool with people knowing what happened, man. I, I, I'm, right. I, my memory sucks ass, bro. I swear I probably would. I probably would have made a story up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the damn truth. <laughs> I even told the doctor. And you know what the biggest problem was after that? Now, I'm still in Germany for a couple of days, right? You know yeah. what the biggest issue was? Now, I was 53 years old that time. Yeah. I've been wiping my ass with my right arm for 53 years. Oh, now, I had to wow. turn that shit around and wipe with the left, bro. Can you imagine? How hard, how hard was that? Uh, bro, I had to... Before I can't I, even imagine I, fucking doing that. I did, I did the same. You know what I did? I took the toilet paper, I rolled up my whole sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure <laughs> I had to get used to it, bro. I had to get used to it. Fuck, man. I was so happy when I was home because, like I said, I just got this flush. You, you got the bidet, yeah. Oh, yeah. and I just, you know, I was just shake my ass a little bit. And I'm good to go. So that was the hard time. Uh, I didn't even Brother. think of that. That's the yeah. fucking worst. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was my only. That's my only injury I ever had, and that was ten years after I retired. All the bodybuilding and all, Never. all the fucking deadlifting. Never. And, uh, no aches, no pains. Wiping nothing. your ass got you. Wiping my ass. <laughs> Ain't that a damn shame? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I would have lied myself, but it's okay. It's no. a, at least you're honest. At least Why? You're honest. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I I, I'm bad. I can't remember when I lied. I couldn't remember <laughs> what I said. <laughs> anyway. All right, brother, man. Listen, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah. Before I bit last thing, give me your top six at this year's Olympics. Just for now, this, I know there's nothing is set in stone. We don't even know who's qualified. Just from who you know, who you think will qualify, what do you see? Rami, Hardy, Flex. No. Yeah, Rami, Hardy, Fle Rami, Flex, Hardy, Brandon. No, I'm going to put you got to put eight guys in the top six. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's hard, man. I know. That's why I'm asking you. We'll see who gets Rami. who gets more mad with the guys you're not mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> Rami. Let me write this down. Flex. Hottie. You got three more. Curry. Four, two. Bonac. One second. Bonac. Curry. Bonac. Diasha, Sergio, Walker, Akeem, J James, Hollingshead. Yeah, well, James, James, he's coming too. Do you think he could be top six? Yeah. Really? I Ian, Hunter, fuck. Yeah. So now you got more than eight. Okay, I got Rami, Flex, Hottie. Those are my top three. Okay. I'm going to go Walker. Curry, no. You don't have to go. It doesn't have to be in order, bro. Just give them to me. You got one more. You got, you got Walker and Curry. There's one more left. I'm going to say Diasha. Diasha in top I'll six? Say, I'll say, 
I'll say Diaz. Okay. I oh. forgot. I forgot Roly. Fuck. You know, it's too hard. <laughs> I don't do this shit. <laughs> Listen, we'll do it closer to the show again. Maybe on your on your show. And All also, right, we'll uh, remember, yeah, we need to go. We need to rate some of them physics again, man. Yeah, uh, come back on. We'll do a rate. Physique I, I saw on Instagram. There's a lot more camel toes dudes out there, man. So we got to get back <laughs> on it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, man, we'll do Only it. Only the ones that watch the episode, they would know what I'm talking about when I say the yeah. dude with a camel toe. That guy, uh, got, guy got, got mad. He fucking he did he? DM'd me. Oh, yeah, he DM'd me after. He was pissed. Really? Where's he so, from? Yeah. Oh, I don't even fucking know. Was, that was months ago. He got, he's pissed at you? I said it. Yeah. yeah, but it's my show. I get the oh, shit. Anytime so anybody let's do does it. do it again, then. If they get yeah. at you, I don't even got to worry about it. <laughs> no, you can say whatever you want. I'll yeah. take the heat. Yeah. All right, brother. Man, listen, anytime you just let me know, I appreciate you making the time for me because I know you're busy. Yeah, man. And I'm looking forward to, to um, commentating yeah. shows all the yeah. way to the Olympia with you, my man. I'm going yeah, to in, I'm gonna put a good word in right now because I'm right at the yeah. right place right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the I Olympia headquarters. Listen, before you go, I want to thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it, and it's always good talking to you, man. Thank my you pleasure, so much. brother. My pleasure. Thank you, my man, and okay, be brother. safe. All right, man. Take care.